what's up my name is Aaliyah welcome or welcome back to my channel and welcome to another reading vlog so this week Peyton and I are on vacation in Arizona so welcome to Arizona um we decided to take a little getaway vacation and go see some family and so this week we're just gonna be hanging out in the pool reading and I think we might go on some adventures I think today we're gonna go to the aquarium and go book shopping and all that kind of good stuff so I brought a bunch of books with me but I really am just gonna like hang out and mood read this week so I will update you when I've started a book. <laughs> What's up, sweet cheeks? Trouble, trouble, I see you. Hi, girl. What are you doing? Why are you being silly? Oh, nice paw. <laughs> So I have a little reading update for you. So I'm now 118 pages into Babel by R.F. Kuang. So I had zero intention of reading this book anytime soon because I've heard so many mixed reviews about it lately. Some people have been doing rant reviews about it. Some people have been DNFing it. Some people said it's one of the best books they read last year. And I know it's really polarizing. So I was kind of like, you know, I'm just going to let the hype die down. And then later on, if I feel like picking it up, I'll pick it up. But I was at the airport before our flight uh, left for Phoenix and I saw this and I was like, you know what, I'm just going to pick it up and see what I think. And I started reading the beginning of it and I got really into it and so I bought a copy. And then I was reading it on the plane and I was reading it in the pool yesterday and now I'm really into it. So basically this is about this boy named Robin who is orphaned during the cholera outbreak in Canton, China. And basically, we start off the novel uh, meeting Robin, and he, like, has cholera, his mom just died, everybody on his street is already dead from this disease, and this mysterious professor guy shows up, and this man basically uses magic to like save him and like cure his illness and then this professor his name is professor lovell he takes robin with him back to london and kind of like adopts him in a way and becomes like his sponsor and raises him in his house but he makes robin sign all this paperwork and like makes this deal with him that he will give him this like life of luxury in London and teach him languages and everything but he has to like study really hard and hi Ivy <laughs> this is Miss Ivy <laughs> she's very sociable anyways um Robin basically has to make this deal that he will like put all of his effort into studying to try and get into this language school at Oxford university and so he does that and he puts a bunch of time into learning like greek and latin and stuff and he gets into this really prestigious language program at oxford and uh then we have this time jump where he's now like at the university and um he's learning about the institution and he's trying to figure out like if the people there are good and if like learning the languages is actually like benefiting anybody other than like the rich London people so anyways it's really good so far I really like the writing style um but I definitely understand why this might not be for everybody because there's a lot of references to like niche stuff in academia and uh a lot of other like literary texts like at one point R.F. Kuang makes a reference to the vindication of the rights of women by uh, Mary Wollstonecraft 
and stuff like that where like if you don't know what those texts are you might not get as much out of the story but I've read a lot of the stuff that she's talking about because I was an English major at university and I work for a university so I've been like embroiled in academia for like five years so I have a pretty good understanding of what she's talking about but obviously that's not something that everybody has so I understand why a lot of people would go into this and be like this is too like academia for me you know what I'm saying um but I like that she's referencing all these other texts because you can tell that this is a really like smart well-written novel and there's also a lot of footnotes where she's also talking about like colonialism and stuff like that and I think a lot of people go into this thinking it's just going to be like a fun dark academia like fantasy story but really there's like a lot of dark difficult themes that she's discussing in here about racism um, because our main character Robin is Chinese and so there's a lot of people at the university who are really racist to him and they're making a lot of rude comments and that kind of thing and so that's a little bit tough to read about but overall I'm really enjoying it and I'm excited to see where the story goes um, so I think I'm gonna read some more of this today and then I have also just started reading Vampires of El Norte by Isabel Canias. So this is our September book club pick for the Big Bad Booty Bitches book club. And so I wanted to start it while we're here so I will have it done and everything by the live show. Um, and I think the live show is going to be October 1st at 1 p.m. PST, 4 p.m. EST, if you want to join us for that. Um, I'm not sure if this vlog is going to be up before or after the live show, um, but if it's up after the live show, then our October pick is the Southern Book Club's Guide to Sing Vampires, if you want to join us for that in October. Um, but anyways, so that's kind of where I'm at. Um, I'm getting into this, getting into Vampires of El Norte, and I think later today we're going to go on some adventures. So I will see you later. <laughs> See the shark, Mom? There's big sharks in here. That was a shark, yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, that's a big shark.
subscribing to this little hammock. Look at them. Look at this little toes. <laughs> That's a crazy looking turtle. Oh my god. Wow. Amazon. Yeah, how tall is that? That is insane. Fish tank changes colors. <laughs> teeny tiny cuttlefish. See it? It's incredible. Bye. 
have been there. Give him another nut. See what he does. Mm.
happy Tuesday. I wanted to give you a little book haul of all the stuff that we got from the bookstore yesterday. So the first one that I found is Yellow Face by Arv Kuang. So this is her newest release. It just came out a couple months ago. And I think it's about this lady, June, who's a writer. And she has another friend, Athena, who is also a famous author. And her friend, Athena, mysteriously dies. And she steals Athena's recent manuscript. And she edits it and pitches it to her editor as if it's her own work. And then after the book comes out, she is kind of like haunted by Athena's ghost. And it sounds really cool and interesting. I'm excited to read some more of Arv Kuang's stuff because I'm really enjoying um, her current book that I am in the middle of. And then I also grabbed one of Martha Wells's books and it's Network Effect, which is book five in the Murderbot Diaries series. And I read the first like four books in this series, but I got part of the way through this one on audio and then I never got to finish it. So I saw it there and I was like, you know, I think now is the time to get into this. So this one follows Murderbot on another one of his adventures as he tries to save this human crew in space and it looks super interesting. So that's that one. And then I also grabbed another one by Isabel Claudius and I got The Hacienda. Finally, I've been wanting to get this book for so long. And this is another one where I read it, got part of the way through it, and then had to return it to the library. And so I've been dying to finish this one. This is a horror novel set in Mexico and it's about this haunted hacienda. Sorry, I had to come inside to finish talking to you about the Hacienda because the dog started barking. Um, but the Hacienda is a horror novel set in Mexico and it's following this woman named Beatrice. And she ends up marrying this mysterious man after her father dies. And she moves in with her new husband to his house. And when she gets there, she realizes that something is wrong with this Hacienda where he lives. And it's super creepy and the servants are really cryptic and his sister lives there and she's also kind of a weird gal. And Beatrice finds out that this man's previous wife uh, died um, and she's only been living at the house for like a year. And so Beatrice is trying to figure out like what happened to the first wife and what all the servants are keeping from her because they have some kind of like secret it seems like and it's got this really creepy eerie atmosphere and I really enjoyed the first part of it that I read um, but I really want to read the end and it also has this really cool like end paper print as well so I'm really stoked to get to this and also at the bookstore they gave me these little bookmarks and they're super cute and they say the name of the bookstore on them and it's kind of like raised font isn't that awesome so anyways I'm super excited and we had a really fun time yesterday going to the bookstore and we also went to the aquarium and had a really good time they had a lot of like sharks and different kinds of fish and they had a sloth and a toucan and it was awesome um so we had a really good time yesterday and today is our last day in arizona so we're kind of just hanging out by the pool and chilling um but i think i'm gonna go sit in the pool and read for the rest of the day until dinner and then i think we're going out to dinner so that's the plan and i will talk to you later Hello, so we are now back from Arizona and I wanted to give you a final little update on all the reading that I did. And so uh, I wanted to give you an update on where I'm at with Babel. So I'm 160 pages in and so far I'm actually really enjoying this still. We have gotten to the part where uh, Robin is meeting his like cohort, which is like the group of little students that are in his class 
in the School of Babel. And so it's him and his friend, uh, Rami, and then two women. And at this school, there's a lot of racism, but there's also a lot of, like, sexism. So the girls in his cohort are, like, quickly becoming his friends and, like, telling him about kind of how women are treated at the school and all that kind of stuff. And it's really interesting. And um, he's also alluding to the fact that, like, he is becoming really close with his cohort, but he makes comments about how, like, in the future they end up, like, really emotionally, like, hurting each other and, like, being separated or, like, being on different sides of whatever big event is coming up. Um, and so I think that's really interesting as well. And Robin's also been approached by this secret society on campus called the Hermes Society, which is basically this group of, um, like, young people and, like, former students who have decided that, like, the School of Babel is corrupt and that, you know, the only people who are benefiting from their magic and the studying that they're doing is these rich, like, British people who are benefiting from the silver magic that they're learning at the school. And so, basically, these people in the Hermes Society are, like, stealing these silver bars and, like, selling them to other countries and, like, people in need and, like, people who are sick because the silver bars can, like, help heal people who have, like, the plague and stuff like that. And so, they're approaching Robin because they have some knowledge about, like, the professor guy who's raising him and like think they think that he's not so great and anyways so robin is kind of like torn between these two worlds because he is really like loving his studies and his cohort people and all that and he really likes the school and academia and all that but on the flip side he knows that this Hermes society is actually trying to help people who need these silver bars because Britain is so wealthy it's like the wealthiest country in like the whole world at this point and um, so he's kind of torn because he wants to like help China and like his hometown and everything but he doesn't want to get kicked out of Babel because basically what the Hermes society is asking him to do is treason and so he's kind of feeling this guilt and he's trying to figure out where his loyalties lie and all that and it's really good so far. It's actually a pretty fast read, um, even though it's really big. I feel like once I got into it, it wasn't actually that intimidating. Um, it just looks scary from the outside. But I'm really enjoying this so far. And then I also started Vampires of El Norte, and I'm getting into this one as well. So I think I'm like 95 pages in. And this one is also really really good so um, I need to finish this really soon because our book club live show is coming up in a few days um, but this is following these two people uh, Nena and Nestor and they have been really really close ever since they were like eight years old and uh, they are kind of having this like romance as they're like getting into their teenage years and then they go out one night to kind of just like hang out and talk but they're also looking for like buried silver because they know that um our main character nena's family owns this ranch and nestor works on the ranch he's kind of like one of the ranch boys and um her family is really wealthy but there are people who are coming to ask about like buying the land and they're trying to like take the land from her family and so the kids think that if they can find silver it will like help them keep the land and stuff and so they go out in the middle of the night in the middle of the desert and they're trying to find this silver because they've heard stories about this guy who brought silver over and died in the desert and he like buried it um, so they're trying to find it and then something bad happens and uh our main character Nena gets attacked and this whole big event happens this one night and Nestor ends up fleeing the ranch and they're like torn apart for like nine years and then it skips ahead nine years in the future and we get to see Nestor and Nena as they're brought back together because this war is starting and Nestor this whole time he thought that Nena was dead and he has just been like not in a good place and he's been moving around a lot and he like barely even talks to his family anymore and it's like a whole thing and he uh gets this letter one day and it's somebody from the ranch 
that Nana's family owns and it's actually like from her brother and he's like hey like there's this war starting and we're trying to gather men to like fight for our um, ranch and like protect us will you come back because his Nestor's uncle still lives on the ranch and they are basically telling him like hey your uncle's too old to fight like we need you to come and fight in his place and so Nestor's like okay I'll do it and he is basically like haunted by what happened that night with him and Nena in the desert and he gets back and all of a sudden he finds out that she's not dead and his whole world is like shattered because this whole time he thought that she was dead and it was like she was like the love of his life and he was just a wreck so anyways now we're getting like dual pov between the two of them and they're like forced into this situation where they're about to be in the middle of a war and there's all this like tension between them because they were like in love as kids and Nestor's still like totally into her and it's like a whole thing but um I'm super excited about where this is gonna go and there's also like these scary vampire monsters that are in the desert and there's this group of people the Anglos who are trying to steal uh, the land in Mexico from the ranchers and so they're gonna have to go and fight the Anglos but there's also this like vampire monster thing happening and um, if the vampires bite you you get this like disease where it's almost like your soul and your body like separate and you die anyways it's a whole thing but it's really really good so far and reading this in the desert in Arizona was like a whole different experience because it just felt a lot more immersive like you know, being able to see the desert and read about it and like really be in it in this Mexico setting was really cool. So anyways, I think this is where I'm going to leave this vlog. Um, if you made it to the end, leave me a little cactus emoji in the comments. And I think you'll probably be hearing my thoughts on these in some other uh, reading vlogs or the live show for the book club. Um, so make sure you check that out if you want to hear my final thoughts on Vampires of El Norte. Um, but thank you so much for watching and I will see you in another video very soon. Bye!